okay so let's get started uh, yeah so if you recollect in the last class we started to look at what happens when the amplifier the residue amplifier we use here does not have the required gain we want right and we saw that uh, if there is any mismatch or any variation in the gain for this residue amplifier what we will get is that the quantization noise of the first stage does not get cancelled completely and a portion of it gets leaked through right so of course as i mentioned there may be cases where even after this leakage the quantization noise from the first stage might be smaller than this person i mean this guy right so in that case it is okay but in some cases we might still have to reduce this so any suggestions as to what can be done to uh, i mean uh, tackle this problem i mean the point is we want an gain of say uh, whatever 2 power b or something right we try to realize it in the analog domain i find that this doesn't match this is there is some variation right so and that results in this leakage here okay and remember that uh, this gain here is coming from the residue amplifier that is the analog gain and this divided by g1 here is coming due to the fact that we are doing this left shifting or right shifting operation and that's completely in the digital domain right so now can you think of a way by which we can uh, tackle this mismatch in the analog gain i mean okay let's say this is the problem given to you brute force what would you do i find that the gain is not matching so what would you do yeah i mean okay one way is to yeah you see if this gain no the point is sometimes it might be it might so happen that the gain might be larger than what you want also okay so the point is okay that uh, you try some ways to correct for this gain in the analog domain that is you try to make this amplifier better and better that is obviously one way but is there some other way that you can think of i mean uh, remember the overall idea was at the output we should have only this right we should not have the quantization noise coming from the previous stages right so uh, we want to minimize this as much as possible that's our target so any suggestions what can be done correct yeah that is one way so we can uh, go back and uh, try to make this amplifier better so that this gain matches the required gain but let's say i mean uh, beyond some point you cannot do it right we can't completely correct in analog so is there something that can be done sorry we can uh, i didn't follow you subtract okay this one i mean this is the uh, error factor what do you want to do now yeah point is the moment you try to do something here we will have we will be processing the signal in the analog domain right i mean the problem original problem stemmed from the fact that in the analog domain when you try to realize an amplifier there is some variation or mismatch in the gain okay and i mean uh, recollect that our overall goal is to make this term as small as possible right and let us say you are not able to change this analog gain what can you do right i mean the idea is you can make uh, g1 equal to g1a right i mean remember this g1 is the digital uh, gain or this digital division right so now instead of using a gain in the digital as 2 power g1 if we try to use a gain which is close enough to g1a this can get cancelled okay and that is what is done commonly again sorry. correct yeah that's the price you have to pay right so that's what i'm getting at so ideally let's say you want to have uh, analog gain equal to the digital gain equal to say some 4 okay it uh, let's say it turns out that the analog gain is some 4.01 or something so in that case the only option you have is to make the digital gain also equal to 4.0 but obviously as i mentioned this is no longer a simplified operation that is if you just had to do v2 by 4 it is very trivial you just right shift 
but now it is divided by some 4.01 so it's going to add some complexity that is some price you have to pay so in many times what uh, we do is instead of uh, doing this operation v2 by uh, g1 we just do g1 times v plus v2 both are equally valid right that's fine i mean essentially i'm multiplying this by g okay i mean whatever you do i mean our final goal is that the quantization noise from the first stage must be cancelled that's all so instead of implementing this or this i will multiply this by g1d this will also ensure that the quantization noise completely gets cancelled is that okay right so in that case instead of multiplying by a gain of 4 you will be multiplying with some gain say 4.01 or 3.99 or something and that's that means we'll require a dedicated multiplier and that is the additional complexity you need to have to account for this uh, error in the analog gain okay uh, mismatch meaning yeah i mean some kind of error that is coming when you realize the uh, analog amplifier yeah i mean again uh, any kind of matching uh, you cannot do perfectly right so you cannot exactly uh, you know find what is g1a and get the digital gain all you try to do is you try to minimize it that's all okay and i mean there are multiple ways in which you can do it. if someone is not muted let me okay muted yeah, okay yeah so uh, there are multiple ways again by which you can find what is the uh, analog gain and have an corresponding digital gain one brute force way is to uh, look at apply some input to the adc here right and see what is the output spectrum you get so ideally you will have the input tone plus only the quantization noise corresponding to this fellow right ideally right but uh, if there is any gain error here along with that you will also have quantization noise you to q1 also right so the point is you will have a higher quantization noise power right so one uh, brute force way is to look at the integrated noise power and change the digital gain so what you can do is let me draw it in another page so you have v1 v2 so let's say i do the other way i multiply this by uh, g1d this i'll take and then i'll add it right so uh, let's say this is the here is okay so i apply some input i'll find what is the output here look at the uh, integrated noise power and uh, you try to minimize this gain i mean i or try to vary this digital gain so that you try to minimize this noise power that's fine because that's the overall goal we want right we want to have the quantization noise coming from the first stage to be completely cancelled right so the minimal solution i mean the optimal solution for this is this fellow where you just have quantization noise only from the second stage right and in that case you will have the lowest uh, quantization noise power right so you tweak the digital gain so that you have the minimum possible quantization noise power that's fine of course this is not the only way you will find in literature there are many clever ways to correct for this but i'm just saying one brute force way in which you can do it is that okay okay so let's say you apply some sinusoid here okay ideally let us say the uh, gain there is no mismatch in the analog and the digital gains right so in that case if you look at the output spectrum you will have corresponding to the sinusoid you'll have something right and you will have only the quantization noise corresponding to this q2 by g whatever g1 right but the moment there is a mismatch in the analog and the digital gain along with this you will also have quantization noise due to the first stage also right so this overall will be due to q2 and q1 right 
so what i'm saying is one way is you look at the output spectrum find the integrated noise power right and go back and tune this digital gain and see at what point you get the least or the minimum uh, quantization noise power okay i mean if you have taken some course on optimization you know there may be multiple ways to do this uh, convex optimization but okay let's not go there but you get the basic idea right the point is you are using some kind of a feedback you look at the output spectrum you find what is the integrated noise power you change the gain right and if it's increasing you i mean if you find the quantization noise power increases probably you are going in the opposite direction so you decrease the gain and you keep doing it till you find that the quantization noise power is minimized is that okay so this how you usually uh, account for this amplifier uh, errors so now let's uh, look at i mean the other block we have is this dac right and uh, we still haven't discussed how we'll implement this dac right so let's look at the circuit implementation of this pipeline edc so that we know how the dac is implemented so let me consider a two stage pipeline edc so this is my first stage or we'll have a duct here we'll have again and the second stage right so let's say this is a two bit edc we have uh, what would be the gain of this recipe amplifier 2 power 1 right if you have one bit redundancy it's 2 okay so gain is 2 and let's say there is some uh, three bit edc so oops in this you know how to realize this edc right so this edc could be a slash edc that we saw how we can implement it so let us say uh, the we implement the flash edc such that during the phase phi 1 you sample the input okay and during the phase phi 2 you do the regeneration that is the it regenerates and makes the decision okay so now with this uh, you know assumption let's see how we can implement this portion first and remember what this portion does is it the overall goal here is to take the difference between the input that is sampled by this flash edc and the quantized version of the input that it produces and you take the difference between the two right because we are interested in finding the error made by the edc right so now we find that the flash edc is sampling the input during the phase phi 1 let's say that's how we have implemented the flash okay so now can you tell me during which phase this amplifier also has to sample the input Phi one, right? Because see, the goal is you want to uh, take the error between the input that the ADC processes and the quantized version it produces. So this is sampling the input during phi one. So you also better sample the input here during phi one. Okay. So what you do, you take the input, you sample in phi one. So which means you can amplify it during phi. Two. Okay, and uh, what is a circuit that can implement such an operation i mean are you aware of some circuit that realizes this sorry no we just want to sample and amplify some output right so swiss cap amplifier right so is that clear i mean integrator integrates right we just want to amplify so what we need is we need to sample the input during the phase phi 1 i'll do it like this Oops. and during the phase phi 2 i'll have to amplify it okay so i'll transfer it to a feedback capacitor like this and i'll reset this during the phase phi 2 okay hopefully you are familiar with this okay so now here we want to have a gain of 2 
so how do you think the these two capacitors must be ratioed if i call okay i'll say if this is c what should this capacitor be c by 2 or 2 say i am getting two opinions how many of you are saying c by 2 2c is that fine okay which consensus okay right see because the thing is the input is sampling i mean this capacitor 2c samples the input right so the charge it has is 2c times u that is at the end of phi 1 at the end of phi 2 you see that both the plates are kind of grounded right this is virtual ground this is like hard ground so this should not have any charge in it so the charge it had acquired in the earlier phase must go to this capacitor right so this is the charge this capacitor has so the voltage across the capacitor is the charge by the voltage so this is 2 times c okay so that solves this part that is this portion can be realized where you take the input and amplify by 2 but now we need to do the other operation also where you have to uh, take the digital output convert it to an voltage subtract and amplify right and uh, when do you think the input to the dac is available during which phase sorry phi 1 or 2 phi 2 right because only during phi 2 the first adc makes a decision so the input is available to the dac during phi 2 and let's say assume that the dac can produce an equivalent voltage without any delay okay so if i call the output as some v dac this v dac also is available during phi 2 right so what should the amplifier do it should uh, take the v dac during what phase it can sample this uh, v dac phi 2 because during only phi 2 we have it available right so you sample in phi 2 and of course since you are already amplifying uh, this input during phi 2 we will also try to amplify it in the same phase okay and uh, how will you do that let me copy paste it so my aim is i have an input say some vdac i want to sample and amplify during the same phase phi 2 so how do you think the switches will be clocked yeah hold on let me yeah so what about the uh, clock phase of these switches both the two right and during the other phase you reset okay the point is if you do here 2 2 then you are sampling it only during phi 2 right the capacitor is not transferring charge in phi 2 that can happen only in the next phase isn't it see this is the circuit in phi 2 yeah because already you see that Uh, when you are doing this operation you are amplifying in phi 2 so we are trying to combine both that's all okay and what is the uh, let's say this is now our vdac what is the output here sorry minus 2 vdac is that fine i mean one other way to think is see in one phase you are resetting this capacitor in the second phase all you have is an inverting amplifier like this right okay so the output will be an inverted version of the input. so we'll have the same gain but with an inverted sign okay but all, all i mean but here what you want is uh, two times u minus v dac right that's what you want here at this output okay so we have these two circuits can you stare at these two and tell me how you can uh, do that Yeah, okay. Of course, you can take the two outputs and add it. But let's say I want to combine the two with using a single op amp. I mean, just look at the two circuits and tell me if something strikes you. Or let me erase this part. Okay, positive terminal meaning which one? Here, 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 here. Sorry. I'm saying without using. Uh, I mean, let's say. without using an additional amplifier can you do it 
Yeah, I mean, let's say you don't want to do that. I mean, usually you don't want to do it because I have drawn only a half circuit, right? If you want to realize a fully differential portion, I'll replicate the same here also. So usually we don't want to add anything here. Ah, sorry. Here. Here. That is fine. That that's perfectly fine. But remember, VDAC is available during which phase? I two. Here. Okay. I mean, what is saying is right. So I mean, one way to think is I'll just redraw the circuit slightly. Okay. What I'll do is I'll change the polarities of these switches. So this is one, this is two, right? So in that case, this is grounded. This will be VDAC. The same thing, right? During the phase five, and I am resetting both the caps. During the phase five two, I will connect it like this. Okay, same circuit, right? Now you look at the two circuits. It looks like uh, in this circuit, VDAC is zero, and in this circuit. The input u zero, right? It's like having, I mean, it's like superposition, right? So what I'll do is I'll apply VDAC here. That's all. Okay. Is that fine? Okay. I mean, you can also analyze it and uh, confirm that this works. Okay. Is that clear? Fine, right? So we now know how to uh, realize this portion. Sorry. This entire portion. So now let's try to see how we can implement this guy, which is the DAC. So for that, let me draw your attention to this uh, characteristics of a two-bit quantizer. So let's say this is minus VRF and uh, say plus VRF. I have a two-bit quantizer. I'll have four levels at the output. So let's say it's looking like this. And you know, this is V of by two and this is minus V of by two. So what is uh, this level? V of by four, is that fine? I mean, the idea is you see zero to V of by two, you assign it to a middle voltage, right? That's all. So this is, I just write one fourth. This is minus one fourth. So this will be three fourths. This is minus three fourth. Right, and if you code it uh, digitally, this is going to be my code zero, code one, code two, code three. Right. So uh, now let us say I have the code zero, one, two, one, three. What is the equivalent voltage I have? VDAC. For code zero, what is the equivalent voltage I should produce? Minus minus three times VDAC by four. This is minus VDAC by four. This is plus speed of by four, right? And remember that when we, I mean, we are having a fully differential input, right? So the ADC will also be fully differential. Okay. So this is again a two bit ADC. So we'll have both V1 and V1 bar, right? So and remember when we have a two bit ADC, how many comparators we use? Three comparators, right? So essentially you have a three bit thermometer code out, uh, thermometer coded output, right? So for code zero, what will be uh, these three bits? Sorry, zero, zero, zero. For code one, code two, no, zero, one, one, right? Because see, if the input is great, I mean, you are comparing input with several thresholds, right? And last is one, 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 right? That's all. So similarly, V1 bar is just inverted version of it. I'll quickly write it, right? And of course, the uh, corresponding uh, decimal equivalent of this is zero, one, two, one, three. For this, it is three, two, one, zero. Okay. Is that fine at this point? So now by looking at this, can you tell me in words from these V1 and V1 bar, which are our ADC outputs? Just in words, can you tell me what's happening here to generate this VDAC? If you have to explain in words, you have V1 and V1 bar, right? 
just by looking at d1 d1 bar and the required output can you explain in words what you need to do sorry no i want to you understand the question so i have d1 and d1 bar from these two i have to generate a voltage v dac right i mean i just don't think about how you will implement in circuit if you want to explain in words how will you say how is uh, v1 and i mean this v1 v1 bar related to v dac I mean, look at the equivalent uh, decimal representation of V one V one bar. Okay, and yeah, yeah, is that fine? All I need to do is take V one minus V one bar, multiply by V ref by four. That's fine. So V that must be V one minus V ref bar times V ref by four. Okay, and again, since you will be implementing in a fully differential fashion, I will say. The positive is v one times v ref by four, and the uh, minus portion is v one bar times v ref by four, right? So if you apply it to a fully differential circuit, this difference is this difference is done. Okay. So let me write that now. So let's say for the positive portion, I'll say the positive input is U P, negative input is U M, right? So in the positive half, I'll be doing this V U uh, P minus V dot P, and U P this and V dot P is V one times V ref by four, right? And V one itself, remember, is a thermometer coded. Right? So we have three bits. I'll just call V one three, V one two, V one of one, right? That's fine. And the uh, V one from these three bits, what do you do? Sorry, yeah, number of ones. I mean, in terms of operation, what is the operation? Add, right? So I'll just write it like this. So U P minus okay times V ref by four. So I'll just uh, take this V ref by four everywhere. By four, is that fine? Okay, so now uh, recollect that each of v one, uh, sorry, v one three, v one two, v one one, they either take values one or zero, digital bits, right? And what this operation means? If the bit is one, you need to have a voltage V of by four. Bit is zero, you need to produce zero. So what I want at the output, I need to have either V ref by four or zero volt, and the decision is made based on one of the bits, V one three, whatever. So how do you implement it now in circuit? Sorry, huh? No, no. Remember, this is our analog voltage, right? Two switches. Is it clear to everyone? I will have a switch like this. So if V one three is one, the switch is closed. I will send the voltage to the output. Similarly, I'll control the switch by V one three bar. Okay, that's fine. If V one three is sorry, yeah, it's a multiplexer essentially. It's an analog multiplexer. That's all. Right? Is that fine? So now you know how to uh, implement this portion, each of these portions, like this. And so let's. Uh, put everything together into a single circuit, and recollect that we, in the first case, this portion, what it does, it, it can take two inputs. Say I'll call some u1, u2, and take the difference between the two. Right? That's fine. Any questions? Is that fine? I mean, or I'm just generalizing it, right? This is V dab, but let us say I call it uh, U two, and this is some U one. All it does is takes the difference between the two, multiplies by two, right? So now we have a scenario like this where this portion is there, 
and we know how to realize this right two inputs need to be subtracted and of course this needs to be amplified by a factor of two right so let me also put it right this is the output we want at the residue amplifier output right difference between the two multiplied by a gain two so let me draw that once i'll have this guy i'll have u i'll have this v1 three times v of by four and that internal is realized using this right and remember this is simply v1 of three times v of by four okay so here what we have is i already have switch phi two here i should have applied the second input right the second input for us is this v1 of three times v of by four and that i am going to realize using the two switches this is v of by four this is zero this is v1 of three okay is that okay and during the phase phi 2 i'll again transfer it to feedback capacitor again this all reset okay so this realizes the operation i mean what will be the output here yeah output is speedy correct yeah Uh, you are saying you generate a ladder like this? Yeah. Okay. Let's see how we'll generate zero by four. So you are saying how we can generate zero by four? Is that what? Uh, okay. Let's say this is available for you. Correct. Okay. V one is three bits, right? V one three. Correct. No. Uh, I still, I, I'm not sure. I got you. I got you. Uh, I mean, this is generating what are VDD by four. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Got it. So you're saying this will be V one of three. Order one individual bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You are saying if this is one, that is if this is equal to VDD, you directly get VDD by four. If this is zero, this will be zero. So that, that's actually good. That will work. But again, the problem is you need to have uh, one is power. Of course, this resistor is going to draw power, right? Because it's always on. Second is the resistor need to be properly matched. This is based on the assumption that all the resistors have the same value, right? Only then you have zero by two. Yeah, yeah, we'll come to that actually. So till this point, it is fine. So what will be the output here? U minus. Yeah, whatever. V one of three times V of by four, right? So we have uh, done this part. But what about these two? Sorry, these are minus, right? Sorry, I made a mistake here. Okay. So I need to uh, subtract or add these two portions. So what do you suggest we can do? Uh, perform this operation. To this, you want to add one more. Yeah, that that's also fine. But let us say I don't want to add additional op-amps. Sorry. Okay. Uh, think in this line, right? Let's say you have a normal inverting amplifier like this. Okay. So let's say this is R and R, or let's say R two R. If this is V one, what is the output? Right. You let me just say that again. This is minus two V one. 
So let's say I want to add minus two v one minus two v two. What do you do? One more resistor here, right? V two. So we'll do the same thing here also. Okay. And remember, uh, for this case, we don't need to sub add u one or u p, right? So what I'll do is I'll add two additional branches here. I have only space to draw one, but uh, assume that there is one more. I don't need to have u, right? So I'll just ground it. Okay, and this will be uh, the second bit. Right? That's fine. And similarly, you'll have one more for uh, one more branch like this that is controlled by the LSB. That's fine. Clear. Okay, so now let's come back to the question he asked. So generally, for the ADC, we have only reference as the given inputs, right? So uh, we have to generate VRF by four, and uh, in the process of generating VRF by four, we'll obviously make some mistake. Okay. So what is usually done is we take this. Hello. Let me take this. The only input I have is VRF. Okay, so I'll make sure that the inputs that are given to these switches are only VRF. Okay, so which means the operation I can realize is only V1 of three times VRF. So I'll rewrite this equation so that it matches what we want. So what I'll do is I multiply and divide by four. Okay, so this becomes one fourth. This is four UP. Minus v one of three times v ref. Is this part okay? This is the same equation. I'm just multiplying and divide by four. Okay. So instead of having v ref by four, I'm now having individual bits multiplied by v ref. Is that clear? So what I'll do is I'll in turn split this as u p minus v one of three times v ref. What I'm doing is I'm distributing this four times u p into each of these. Okay. So plus I have u p minus v one of two times v ref plus u p minus v one of one times v ref. I have one u p alone. Is that fine? So now you know how to realize each of these portion, right? So to realize this portion, you need to have this branch, right? And instead of applying uh, VRF by four, I'll apply VRF. Okay. And uh, one last thing. So this is the uh, difference you want to take, but you also want it to be amplified by a factor of two, right? So this is going to be multiplied by two. So I'll have multiplied by two here, two times. So what I'll have this is going to be one half. This is okay. So for each of these which capacitor branch, the gain I want is one half now. Is that okay? So let me draw that once. So we have. The input applied here. During the phase phi two, we'll have these switches. So we'll have V ref here, ground. This will be controlled by say V one three bar. Oops, I think I made a mistake here. Hold on. Just one second. One small correction. So this portion generates V one times V ref by four. Okay, but uh, what you want is this, right? We want to uh, have this switch active only when phi two is on. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll uh, combine. I mean, okay. So uh, I'll ask you this question. So I have two switches like this. One controlled by some input A, one controlled by an input B. What is the overall operation that it realizes? Assume the A and B are digital, right? These are zero or VDD. 
and operation right is that fine so this is simply a times b right so similarly what i have here is if i push this phi to switch to each of these i mean okay the other way is if i have series switches it is and if i have parallel switches what is the operation or operation so what i'll do is i'll uh, take this branch two times uh, v1 of 3 whatever i'll just write it something say a and b i'll write it like this this is phi 2 times a phi 2 times b is that okay because what this realizes this is phi 2 times a plus b i'm just putting it as phi 2 times a plus phi 2 times b right so this i'll write it as phi 2 times this similarly this will be the other one i don't have space to write phi 2 times v1 of 3 okay so this is my first switch capacitor branch let me erase this and similarly i'll have three branches like this okay so here these will be uh, the other bits right so these three branches realize these three operations and finally i also need to add this input up so i'll have the same thing without the additional without this portion that's all okay so this is up this is ground right and all of this will go to my uh, virtual ground is that fine any questions in this yeah we'll come to capacitor yeah right right so and recollect that the gain we want for each of these inputs is one half right so if i call this capacitor c what will be this capacitor value c by 2 okay so this is now going to be c by 2 c by 2 c by 2 c by 2 Fine. No, no, no. Okay, hold on. Let me stop you there. The discussion we had in the initial portion and this is unrelated. Initially, I mean, the initial part. What I told was the analog gain. that is this gain that you realize might have some error i mean here what we want ideally you want to have a gain of 2 that in turn i have split it as 1/2 1 times 1 plus 1 plus 1 right if you think about it this is 1/2 plus 1/2 plus 1/2 this is 2 okay but uh, what i'm saying is in the uh, earlier discussion what we had was this gain need not be exactly equal to 2 that could be some error and if there is some error in this gain one way to correct this you change the way you in which you are combining the digital outputs see yeah so here let's say you implemented this adc okay and then you find that the gain you realized was not exactly 2 it was something away i mean something slightly off from 2 because of that what you will have is the quantization noise from the previous stages they will start appearing at the output and that will increase the quantization noise power so to tackle that problem what we do is you change this digital gain here so that this digital gain can match the analog gain see if you look at this expression here what you have is 1 minus g1a by g1 right and this g1 is coming when you are doing the recombination at the output right so this is essentially a digital gain okay if these two gains are not equal then you will have the leakage of the quantization noise 
So to one way to tackle is you change the digital game so that it matches the analog game. That's a separate discussion. Now what I'm saying is okay. So this is the overall system level. Uh, we looked at it at a system level in terms of individual blocks. Now I'm saying let's look at how we'll implement in circuit. That's all. This this is no way related to how you'll correct for the gain error mismatch. What I discussed now is how we'll implement this entire portion. Because you already know how to realize the ADC flash ADC. Now the DAC, the subtraction, and the gain together we have realized using this complicated looking circuit. Is that okay? Fine. And uh, this circuit is often called the multiplying DAC or abbreviated as M DAC because what happens here, you are taking the digital outputs like these digital bits, converting to an analog voltage and kind of multiplying it here with the gain of two, right? So this also referred to as C DAC stands for capacitive DAC because again, the digital outputs here are co converted to analog voltages and these voltages charge the capacitor and the charge is transferred to the feedback cap. So the conversion from the digital to this output is done using this capacitor and switches, right? So this also called as C DAC. Okay. So let me draw the overall circuit one. So this is my front end ADC. Let's say this is a two bit ADC. So it'll have three thermometer outputs. And we saw how to realize this portion. So we take all these three, blah, 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 multiply it, right? And the assumption was the uh, ADC was sampling in phi one and regenerating in phi two. So this is realizing the gain of two, right? And this entire portion, I'll also draw the back here. This entire portion we realized using a single M duck, right? So when is the uh, output of the amplifier available during which phase? Let's look at the circuit, phi two, okay? So this is available during phi two, right? Because you remember in phi one, the outputs are reset. Only in phi two, all these, uh, each of these branches transfer the charge and the output is available during phi two, okay? So now if I have to have another ADC here, during which phase do you think the ADC must sample this input? Phi two, is that okay? So the second ADC must sample during phi two, which means it will regenerate during phi one. Okay. And of course you'll have this thing if you want to do one more states. Now, when do you think the, this amplifier must sample the inputs? I mean, okay, the amplifier will sample the ADC output in phi one because the second ADC is providing the output during phi one, right? The, this portion will be sampled during phi one, but what about this portion? Again, we collect that the, uh, the job here is to find the error that is made by the ADC here, right? And the ADC is sampling the input during phi two and produces a, a quantized version in phi one. So you want to find the difference between the input that was sampled by this ADC and the ADC is sampling during what phase? Phi two, okay. So since the ADC is sampling during phi two, even this amplifier must sample during phi two, okay. I mean, the same thing we had right here, the ADC was sampling in phi one. So we made sure that the input path is sampled during phi one and the input was amplified during phi two, whereas the output that is the ADC output was sampled and amplified during the same phase. Is that okay? So the same thing will repeat here. So here the input is available during phi two or input is sampled during phi two by this ADC. So this amplifier also will sample the input during phi two and amplify during phi one. So the output here is available during phi one. 
So in phi one, what happens? The first ADC samples. Okay. And in phi two, it, uh, let's say V one is the first ADC output. V one is available, right? And during the same phase, these two is subtracted. Okay. And amplified by the gain. And the output here is available during phi two. Okay. And the second ADC now will again uh, sample the input during phi two and regenerate during phi one. Okay. So since the second ADC is sampling during phi one, the second amplifier here must also sample the input during. Sorry, second ADC is sampling the input during phi two. So the second amplifier here must also sample during phi two. So second. Damp must sample in phi two and amplify in phi one. Okay. Whereas this portion, that the uh, the output of the ADC is available during phi one, so the amplifier will sample and amplify this during the same phase phi one. Is that okay? Probably let me. You guys have class next. Okay. Just one more minute. Let me quickly finish it. So, let's say this is my uh, first clock cycle. Okay, zero TS, two TS, and three TS. And let's say this is phi one, and phi two in each clock phase. So the ADC one is sampling the input in phi one. It's producing the first output in phi two, right? During the same phase, the second ADC can sample. Right, so second ADC, I'll write sample here. The second ADC can sample this during phi two. Remember, because the output here is available during phi two, so second ADC has to sample during the same phase, right? So second ADC sampling during phi two, it will regenerate in phi one. So the output here is available here. Okay. Similarly, when the output here is available, the third ADC can sample. Okay. So the third ADC will sample here, and it will produce the first sample here, and the sequence keeps repeating. So this will sample here. This will produce the second output, right? And similarly, this will sample here. This will produce the second output, and so on. Is that fine? Okay. So one last thing. So uh, now you find that the outputs are all staggered in time. So, if you want to combine them, you need to make sure all of them are aligned in phase. And for the chosen example, each of them are half clock cycle apart. That the first output is available during phi two, the second ADC is available during the next phi one, the third ADC next phi two. So, you just have to realign all these before combining. Okay. So, let's stop here.